What's up everyone, in this video we are talking about your Upwork hourly rates for beginners. I'm Lex Deville, and even if you're advanced on Upwork, then you can still get some use out of this. We're just going to cover some questions I've been getting. You guys have been sending me questions by email and also in Discord chat and through some different other places. So there's some things we need to get out of the way about this. And we're going to cover some misconceptions, some things that people don't agree with me on, but I have proven them incorrect time and time again. So those misconceptions are going to be dispelled today. And we're going to answer some other common questions. If that's something you're interested in, then you will get that right after this. Hey minions, if you're new to the channel and you like what I have to say, then be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss a video. Only do this if you like what I have to say and if you want to hear more about freelancing, entrepreneurship, and personal world domination. So you're on Upwork, you're a beginner on Upwork, and you are trying to figure out what to set your hourly rates at. Maybe you just got approved and you've got your, pro your profile out there or your profiles if you have more than one. Maybe you've sent some proposals and you either got a response or didn't get a response or whatever, I don't know. It doesn't matter if you've worked on some gigs or if you haven't worked on some gigs. Today we're talking about Upwork hourly rates for beginners, but even if you're advanced, you can get something out of this because like I said, we're going to answer several questions that people have about setting your hourly rates, where they should be, what you should pick, where you should start at, things like that. So I guess if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and dive in with that. The first thing I want to talk about is just if you're brand new to the platform. Uh, whenever you're brand new to the platform, you don't know what to set your rates at. And a lot of you are new to the platform because you're coming from maybe traditional employment. You might be laid off right now. You're trying to figure out how to get work, how to get going, how to gain momentum. This is where one of the biggest areas that that other freelancers disagree with me on. And I think it's really foolish because uh, what I'm going to tell you here in a minute, it seems counterintuitive, but it's the exact right thing to do if you want to get started fast and if you want to make money. But a lot of freelancers out there will say you need to start with higher rates. You need to start with 50 to $70 an hour so that you can replace your full-time income. And I tell those people they're incorrect because no freelance client is going to hire you at those rates when you don't have any proof that you're someone capable of being a good freelancer. If you haven't worked with other clients, if you haven't proven yourself, if you haven't delivered good work, if you don't have good feedback, clients are not going to hire you at those rates except under two conditions. The first condition is one, you have major, major credibility markers. You have a lot of credibility that's you have the exact credibility that this client needs. That could be education, experience, location. It could be places you've been featured. It could be number of sales you've gotten. Like if you are someone who is truly a specialized expert and you have a lot of credibility, then you might be able to set higher rates and get started quickly with those. The other, the other uh, situation is when you have a highly, highly in-demand skill. So let's say you're a software developer, you're an app developer. If you're something that is really in demand, if you are something very specialized, and there's a lot of people who need that skill, then they will pay you higher rates when you first go to Upwork. But if that's not you, if you were someone who is trying to get into a writing field, translation field, uh, maybe web design, if you are trying to get into social media management, virtual assistantry, uh, any of those traditional skills on Upwork, you're gonna have to start lower. And I'm talking way lower. Most of you who don't have the powerful credibility markers and you also don't have a super specialized skill, you're just getting into freelancing for the first time, you need to start at lower rates. Five to $10 an hour is where I would go. And if you are someone who is starting out on Upwork and you do have some experience, let's say you're a copywriter and you have some agency experience, good, bring that over. You might be able to go a little bit higher at $15 to $20 an hour if you, add your credibility into your your profile and you show examples of your work in your portfolio and you also write good custom proposals. So if you're just starting out though and you're just trying to get into something like customer service, sales, uh, virtual assistant, copywriting, article writing, social media, any of those things, you need to go in at around $5 an hour, $10 an hour, somewhere in that range. Get some clients who will work with you quickly at that rate because you're valuable to them you become valuable to them. You can deliver great work at that price. There's low expectations, a low ceiling for expectations. So when you deliver good work, it makes them very happy. And then they want to give you good five-star feedback and reviews. Once you have that feedback and review, that first feedback and review, you just do it again. 
and you get another one and you deliver good work and you get good feedback and a five star review. You bump up your rates. Now you can double it. So if you were at five, you go to 10. If you're at 10, you can go to 20. After you have a couple of good feedbacks proving this is social proof, we're building social proof for you. So each feedback, each review, each five star and glowing review says this person is not a scammer. They're not somebody who's going to take my money and run. They're not somebody who's going to deliver crap work. They're not someone I'm going to hate. It's telling that to other clients. It's one client saying that to another client and you need that social proof when you're starting out. So if you were a beginner, a beginner on Upwork and you don't have a ton of credibility and you don't have a super specialized skill, then start at those lower, lower rates. If you have some credibility, you might be able to start a little higher. If you have a ton of credibility, let's say like you're Tony Robbins and you get on Upwork and or you've got a super specialized skill, then go ahead, bump up those rates because people are still going to hire you. But if you are just getting in there with one of those base level skills, I highly recommend going in at lower rates and trying to get gigs fast, getting that good feedback, and then doubling your rates after that. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is your rates and client perception. So let's say you've gotten on the platform, you've started, you've got some good feedback, you've got some good gigs, you've worked at people, let's say five, 10, $20 an hour, and it shows in your work history. It shows $20 an hour, $20 an hour, $20 an hour. And that's what's showing to clients who are considering hiring you. And now you're thinking, maybe I could bump that up to $40 an hour, right? That's a That seems like a big leap. At first, going from 10 to 20 is not that big of a leap, but going from 20 to 40 seems like a big leap, or from 40 to 80 or whatever you want to go to. And you have this question of, won't clients just look at my past work history and won't they won't that scare them away? Won't they think that I'm just raising my prices for no reason? And a lot of people doubt themselves in this area. And here's the way I look at it. So if I were to go to McDonald's and I wanted to get a freaking hamburger and maybe yesterday it cost a dollar, right? But today McDonald's raised their price to $2. Depending on how bad I want that hamburger, I'm going to pay $2 for that hamburger. I'm not going to question it. I'm not going to say, oh, but your prices were $1 yesterday and now they're $2 today. And uh, if I do question it, then I don't have to buy from you. But in my experience as a client, whenever a freelancer puts a price out there, I just assume, I just accept that that's the price. Or I assume that whatever the price they have listed hourly is going to be uh, you know, it's either negotiable or else they have some different pricing structure. Maybe uh, if you do fixed prices like I do, then you might have a different pricing structure. So for instance, I have myself listed at $100 an hour right now, but when I apply to gigs, I only do fixed price work. That's all you would see in my profile is just fixed prices. So that says something to clients, but if you're doing like $20 an hour and then you raise it to $40 an hour, what that really tells us is, okay, this person decided to raise their rates. I mean, it just is what it is. The price is the price. And some clients might question you on that price, but that doesn't mean there aren't people who will pay that price. So there's nothing to doubt. It's about yourself and your self-worth, your sense of self-worth, what you value yourself at. Once you've delivered for several clients at the $20 an hour rate, you're probably worth more. You've proved that you can deliver at those rates. You've decided to up your prices. If you have what clients want, and if you are specialized, then you're going to be worth higher rates and you can charge higher rates and clients are not going to question it. What they're going to want to do is get on a call with you, talk to you, make sure that you're legit, and then they're going to pay you those rates because that's just what legit entrepreneurs do. They pay people what they're worth. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is rate tiers and client filters. So for those of you who are trying to get clients by way of invitation, you're trying to get found in search results and you're struggling with that, uh, one thing to do is SEO optimization, but that's for another video. What I want to talk about here is where you're pricing yourself at. So when clients search in the search results, there are different ways that they can filter freelancers. And one of the ways they can do that is by pricing tiers. And those pricing tiers have tiers at the low end, the mid range, and then the upper end. So if you are trying to stand out, if you're trying to separate yourself from all the other people, if you're trying to get found, it might make sense for you once you get started to price yourself in the higher end. So once you go above $60, then that puts you into a completely different pricing tier. And a lot of people aren't willing to put themselves in that pricing tier because 
they have low self-worth, they don't value themselves highly enough. But you can put yourself at $60 or above, and when you do that, now all of a sudden you're able to get found in search results because there's a lot less freelancers who are pricing themselves that high. So when clients search for that, you cut out all the other people that they see, and your name might rise to the top, especially if you're SEO optimized. And I realize that SEO has the word optimized in it, but that's a whole different topic also. Point is, if you want to get found in search results and you're trying to get invitations and you're struggling with that a little bit, maybe consider adjusting your pricing. Sometimes when I adjust my pricing, I get results really quickly and that can be sometimes that's adjusting up and sometimes that's adjusting down. For different profiles, for different specializations, you need to test different price points to figure out what works best for you. But if you are struggling to get found in search results, one of the things that you can change is setting your price up above the $60 an hour mark, or even if you're down at the low range, like $5 to $10 an hour, go up a little bit to get yourself in that mid-range tier. But up above the $60 an hour mark, you start to cut out a lot of freelancers because most people don't value themselves or their services that highly. And you don't even have to charge those rates. Like I said, you could be charging fixed price rates that are much lower you know, that are much lower than $60 an hour, say, or even much lower than $100 an hour. But you just have to get the clients to respond to you. So you send out your good quality proposal, you get a response, and then you let them know, hey, I charge these fixed price rates, or hey, this price was actually negotiable, or whatever you want to do, it's totally up to you. But I'm saying you can price yourself higher so that you get into that that different tier of filter so that when clients search, there's less people to search through, and now it makes it much easier for you to get found and get invited and hopefully get clients to reach out to you so that you get paid and get hired at higher rates. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, if you have any questions, drop them in a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. I'm going to be, uh, oh, one thing I was going to tell you guys is I'm going to try and start making more videos. We're going to cover more copywriting topics some more freelance skill based topics, things like that. And we're going to try and put out videos more frequently because my wife's home now. So I've got more time that I can record some videos for you and get those out there. If that's something you want more of, stick around, click the subscribe button, rate, comment, all that stuff. Whatever you want to do, I'm Lex Deville. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.